so strange. Okay, we are live. Kevin, are you there? Good morning. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, I'm going to try hard not to move. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're only 11 minutes late, but that's okay. Uh, this is Fast Facts and Features with me, the brand ambassador for Ethical Flooring. And um, we're having a conversation this month about the facts and the myths um, about the flooring industry. And we've been carrying on about this whole installing a hardwood floor on top of tile. And uh, we've had some great conversations. Kevin, I have learned so much from you in the last couple of weeks uh, during our chitty chats. And um, I have one more question before I want to get into the ultimate, let's start at ground zero. Um, putting in the floor. And I know from being a project manager in the 90s and the early 2000s, there was that whole trend of putting tile kind of everywhere, especially in North Vancouver and mm. West Vancouver. And they ran the tile into the bedrooms, into kitchens, into family rooms. They just ran it everywhere. And that's what designers were doing. So now it's like, okay, I want to put in carpet. Maybe I want to put some nice warm carpet into the bedrooms now. So what's the protocol using tile when you're installing a, you know, a carpet into it? Yeah, I mean, I, there's two answers to that, right? The first one is the ideal is to take it out, as in everything. There, oh. There's really no floor covering that shouldn't be installed on a bare subfloor. I guess that's kind okay. of the ideal, and that's that's what we always want to get to. But Again, if we're if we're talking up about pretty substantial removal costs, and you know to get rid of that tile, and the client isn't interested, and in, and we think that we can still do a job up to our standards and provide our full warranty, and you know that's an important point. Ethical flooring will not do any work that we will not warranty, um, mm -hmm. both on the labor side and something that the manufacturer won't warranty on their side. Right. And actually, that's probably a good future topic because there's a, a high percentage of floors being installed out there that are actually not done to industry standard and therefore the manufacturer will not warranty the floor should there be an issue in the future. And you know what, clients are unaware of that, that they didn't, they weren't even given the option to, to approve or deny that. So anyway, to your question, what we would do on the tile is the same as before. We would check to make sure that everything is nice and tight. There's nothing mm -hmm. that's loose or become unbonded. If there is, we would remove those tiles and fill it in with self-leveling compound to, to create a smooth surface again. Um, so the issue is now with the tack strips, right? So carpet, as mm. you may or may not know, is is usually stretched in. So around the perimeter of the room, which you don't see, but we see, there is these little metal um, spikes sticking out of wood strips. We call them tack strips. The, the official name is called smooth edge. And that is around the perimeter of every area that carpet is installed in and carpet is kicked and stretched onto those onto those pins. Um, and that's what keeps it nice and tight. So in the case of a tile, normally that smooth edge is, um, you know, it's hammered into mm -hmm. the subfloor, either whether it's a wood, a plywood subfloor, or they have concrete nails for when it's into a concrete subfloor. Um, mm -hmm. Not going to work on tile. I mean, you're not going to be able to hammer yeah. into the tile. So in this case, we're looking at, at modifying the procedure and actually um, gluing in those tack strips around the perimeter using a, a high-grade construction adhesive. Um, and that that's it's possible. Okay. It's more expensive. It's more time-consuming. You have to do it and then wait a day for the construction adhesive to dry because it takes at least 24 hours. Um, so it's a lot more involved, but in the end run, it's going to be a lot less expensive for the client. And Again, okay. if we're comfortable doing it and warranting it, then we'll go ahead and do it. So just a one last question, because you know what? I picture every time you talk to me, Kevin, I picture things in my head. I picture the job site happening. So what's the, the thought of I fall in love with a carpet and can you guys create maybe that an, an area rug out of the out of carpet that I fall in love with instead of great, getting it installed? Great question. That's something that we don't advertise heavily, but we actually do a lot of. Um, so we can take we can take any broad loom, um, you know, or it's a fancy word for rolled carpet. You know, comes in a mm -hmm. roll. We can take any of that and cut that down to any dimension that the client desires. Okay. So you can have a fully custom rug fit to your space 
from any of the styles that we have and then any of the colors from that style. Um, and you can even pick the type of edge binding that you want. You can pick the, whether you want an attached anti-skid underlay and there's all sorts of neat features. So yes, it's kind of an unknown part of our business, but we do a lot of it. Um, and we can even get it delivered directly to your home uh, and unrolled after it's done. So it's a Perfect. full white glove, full white glove service to have a fully custom uh, sized, colored and styled underlay or sorry, area rug for your home. So, you know, Kevin, I think like your customers, because immediately I'm like, oh, I don't know about the headache of the uh, gluing down the tax, tax strips. Hmm, maybe I could just put a nice little area rug um, in the in the area. In Absolutely. The, uh, and, it, and, it's, and it's less expensive than most people would mm -hmm. would, ma would imagine because it, it's off of a typical, you know, mass manufactured carpet, which is relatively price, uh, you know, price sensitive. Um, so it might be less than, than people even thought and you get a beautiful, a beautiful carpet. Excellent. And I have watched some fun, they call them ASMR, um, videos where a fellow takes really dirty airy rugs and brings them back to life. Mm. And I know it's probably much easier to kind of roll up a carpet, have it cleaned off site, and then for it to come back too. It's going to have much better longevity. It's certainly possible. Yeah. So, you know, we, it's definitely very common that we will do wool area rugs in this, uh, you know, in this made out of broadloom carpet. Again, just all things considered is going to be usually less expensive than a, an off the shelf wool carpet, uh, a wool area rug. Um, but I think more importantly, it's the ability to custom size it to right. any, any and every room uh, within your home. Um, even if you want something wider than the roll width, it can be seamed together and, and made bigger. So there, there's no, no end to the custom ability on it. And uh, ethical flooring project managers are perfectly uh, well-versed in, in helping the client with this. Great conversation, great tip, great uh, information, Kevin. So we're gonna wrap up today with a little bit of that conversation. It's like, you know what, you've educated me. I'm scared about loose tiles, even though you tell me they're going to get fixed up, you're going to pour the right, uh, you know, leveling compound to make it yep. work. It's like, you know what, Kevin, we're going to bite the bullet. We're going to get this 1980s, 1970s tile the heck out of here and start from ground zero. So let's go through the conversation that you would have with your, with your customer client on what that's going to look like. And then next week, we'll kind of go into, okay, this is the way it's going to, you know, we'll, we'll finish up the conversation next week. Sure. I mean, so the first thing we would talk about is removing the tile. That's the right decision, right? And, and almost yeah. all of these things we've talked about the last couple of weeks, it, it's a bit of a modification on, on what should be, uh, you know, is the perfect scenario. And, it, and it's, a, it's a compromise on... Um, on that in order to accommodate the client's budget and whatnot. But the, the perfect ideal is to remove the tile. So I would say, great, great decision. Uh, number two is, I mean, we're immediately gonna get into what's the cost and the, um, you know, perhaps some of the dust and noise ramifications. Um, so one is with the cost, it's not inexpensive. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's more expensive than the floor covering that's being, you know, installed wow. back. Um, so there, there is some, there is a, you know, there is a decision. You really want this out, and yeah, like you said, it's some pink 1980s tile. Like, yeah, yeah, we, we're never going back to it. I'm like, you're right. Great. Now's the time to put some investment into and in, in getting it out. So um, we talk about the budgeting, of course. That would be the first, the first step. And then if they still, you know, they want to go ahead with it, then we would just talk about some of the noise and dust ramifications because there okay. is going to be there is going to be jackhammers involved um, in terms of removing it, and this is becoming especially important for people who live in high-rise uh, condos. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have neighbors, and yeah. they might not be totally pleased with hours and hours of jackhammering uh, going on in your unit. Um, now, normally they can't say no, but there is a process involved in terms of applying to the strata notifying your neighbors and the elevators and each building will have its own kind of things that, mm -hmm. that are involved um you know that we obviously have to get involved with too to know um so there's a bit of that and so it's a bit of a pain painful process almost like pulling a band-aid you know it's uh, it's going to cost a bit it's going to be dusty it's going to be noisy 
maybe your neighbors might not be super happy with you for a few days. I think a chocolates going around on your floor and the floor below the floor above and drop everybody off a box of chocolates. <laughs> That's a great idea. You know, I never earplugs. Yeah. And <laughs> have, earplugs a, too. Have, a gift, have a gift basket of your yes. chocolate. Um, yeah, so there's a bit of work, especially when you're living in a, you know, in a high rise situation right. or in a townhouse. Um, but once it's over, you know, you've done the right, you've done the right thing. We've got back down to the, to the subfloor and, you know, there's some work that still needs to be done after that, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about next week. Yeah. Um, but it's a short term thing. And, you know, in the end, you've made the right decision and, you know, we, there's no, uh, possibilities of us, um, uh, not being able to do the, our best work. Um, uh, so. Okay. Definitely the right a, way to go. I have a bizarre question. We'll end it with this. Is there any possibility? Okay, because we when we talk about tile, there's oh, there's another topic I can get myself into. Um, taking out tile that's like an actual like tile and linoleum and things like that. The tile is there a possibility of asbestos in ceramic tile? No, there's not. No. Okay. There is in other types of tiles, which right. we, yeah, I'd be happy to talk about for sure. Let's cause... let's put that one on a, on a topic because that's something that um, is coming very apparent as people are doing renovations and stuff like that, is that um, having asbestos in products from, what what year did they stop doing that, Kevin? If you can remember, remember well, putting it's, asbestos? It's depending on the product, but it's the late 1980s and early 1990s Ooh. as an absolute. Okay, so still recent. Element, yeah. So we, we were constantly at the asbestos testing uh, people, um, dropping okay. off chemicals and stuff. So yeah, it's definitely very, very relevant in um, in renovations because right. especially here in North Vancouver, the vast majority of the neighborhoods were built in the, you know, the 50s, 60s, mm -hmm. 70s, and 80s. And right. um, almost all of those in some form or another may contain asbestos in the floor covering. Okay. So something we need to know. Great topic. We'll put that one on for uh, for May. And next week, we're going to wrap up and you're going to tell us exactly what it looks like. Give some prime example. Um, time frames, you know, um, what it looks like for um, setting up the job site for success, taking away the debris, what that looks like. So people understand when you're going to go down the right path, there's a lot of right things that have to come into play in order for it to be done correctly and so your floor is to warranty as well okay big big one right there yes that right was good. there Thanks, thank you so much thank you everybody for tuning in a little bit late today but we appreciate you all watching this live and also on the replay catch us next week at 10 a.m uh pacific standard no pacific daylight time for another edition of fast facts and features bye-bye everybody take care Jeanette. see you next week